Hi, and welcome to Projects and Things. My name's Eve. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make two versions of a wooden dinosaur. And to explain to you how I got here, surrounded by wooden dinosaur skeletons, we have to time travel back a few days. Hey, so it's, it's two days ago. Um, let's start from the beginning. I found a file online of a company that sells CNC plants to make these dinosaur puzzles. Um, so they come in inches and millimeters. And what I'm gonna do for the small one is take a five millimeter piece of birch plywood and cut it out on a bandsaw. To do that, I've taken the six millimeter dinosaur. It looks like this on the sheet of paper and I'm going to print it. A tip for printing these is you go to poster. I'm going to go for 80% of the scale because 100% means that the material needs to be six millimeters thick and I'm going to be working with five millimeters. Then you say poster, 80%, and as you can see here, it turns it into a bunch of A4 papers that we can later stick on top of the plywood and cut it out on a bandsaw. So what this is going to do is the printer is going to shoot out, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, six times three is 18. Oh, so it totally says on the top. <laughs> anyway, so let's press the magical print button and hope this goes fine. Okay, so now I have a stack of papers. What I'd like to do with this video is to show you two ways to make the same dinosaur puzzle. We're going to make a small one the analog way, excluding the fact that we just digitally printed it, um, using a bandsaw, sandpaper, files, all that good stuff. And then I'm going to make a big one for my son's classroom in school using a CNC and a laser. Another way to do this, if you don't have a printer at home, is to use a projector. Let's say your office meeting room has a projector. Borrow it for the day, you put the sheet of plywood against the wall, look, hook up a laptop and project the big file onto the piece of wood, trace it with a pencil, and voila, you have the same thing. In my case, I do have a printer and I don't have a projector, so I'm gonna do it this way. The end result is basically the same. So what I now immediately realize is that the layout as it is, is too big to fit on this sheet. Essentially gonna cut a few pieces out so that they fit better. Okay, I'm gonna cut his legs off. <laughs> leg, rib, other leg. Okay, now the glue is dry and that finishes the segment of Eve eating nuts for 10 minutes. I'm gonna leave these ones because they might kill me. Um, yes, so the template is now gonna go on the sheet of plywood. Then using a jigsaw, I'm going to cut out the big pieces and move everything over to the bandsaw to cut. And I'm super excited because I bought myself a bandsaw, finally. A few weeks ago I found an old bandsaw for like 200 euros on the internet and I couldn't resist the urge. So I bought one and brought it home, it's over there. It's an old DeWalt, put a new blade on it and now it's going to be my... The, the, the maiden voyage for me on this bandsaw is going to be cutting out the dinosaur. So here's a montage of that.
So the idea I had with this puzzle was to give four and five year olds a way to sort of start learning the alphabet. And the way to get there is dinosaurs, because what kid doesn't love dinosaurs? So now in this case, they can take a puzzle piece, put it on there, and as they're making a fun dinosaur, they're learning the letters of the alphabet. That's kind of the clue. Okay, so this concludes the small dinosaur. Now it's time for the more exciting stuff. Um, I'm gonna go over to my friend Niels' company. It's called Eckpunt, and they have a big ass CNC and a laser. So we're gonna make the giant version of this dinosaur. As you can see behind me, uh, resident genius Niels is working on the layout of all the different pieces on the plates that I brought. Because the entire puzzle initially was spaced out very far apart, but now we're trying to min maximize, not minimize, maximize the space on the wood. And then we're gonna put the plates into the CNC machine. This whole thing is gonna get cut out using a six millimeter rounder bit that essentially cuts up. Up cut meaning that the tear out is gonna happen at the top of the plate, which means we're gonna to have to round over the edges at the very end. But that was already the idea. This is, since this is gonna to go to kids. And this part is essentially the simulation that we run before we put the expensive robot to work. So when these dinosaur pieces come out of the CNC machine, they're, they're kind of very rough. Uh, like you can see here, there's still a lot of like wood fibers that come up because we're using this upcut router bit. So it pulls out kind of pieces. So what we did is take a router that's mounted in a table and rounded over all the edges. that you can see here. It's simply rounding over all the edges so it's nice and smooth, because kids will be touching this. So the idea is to have no sharp edges anywhere. Uh, so now I'm back in my workshop with these dino parts to do one final thing, because what happened was that the plate was not exactly nine millimeters. It was like 9.2 or 9.3. And so the dividing pieces that we cut just don't fit. Like they need a little bit more space. So I'm going to bandsaw a little bit, sand a little bit, hopefully have a huge dinosaur to put together. The second assembly of the big dinosaur went exactly the same way as the assembly of the tiny one. So now we're here. Um, the final steps in making this was adding a base plate to it. It's made from the exact same material as the said dinosaur is made out of. I cut the plate, routered the edges so they're nice and round, put some holes in it where the feet will recess into.
Then I added my logo, a website that I'm working on for the near future, and the name of said dinosaur. Um, translated, this kind of means that this is the nicest Brachiosaurus that ever lived in the city. Um, then, after all was said and done, my wife was nice enough to take a soldering iron and to mark each individual piece on this dinosaur and its opposing part on the skeleton, so the kids can easily figure out which sort of piece goes where on the dinosaur. At this stage, all of it is still bare wood. Uh, I very much like the touch and feel of just this birch plywood, but I might gonna put a layer of sort of polyurethane varnish over it just to protect the pieces from all the dirty, dirty kids' hands that will be touching it. Um, that's to be decided later. And this tiny friend, this tiny friend stays here. It's my prototype. He's gonna live in my house. So now all that's left to do is package it up and send it off to the school. So I'm uh, very excited for it. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like these things I do, then please consider subscribing. There should be a button to do so here underneath all of these dinosaurs. And also off to the side here will be other videos all about making stuff. So until next time, thank you.